Shin Megami Tensei, a RPG series known for its dark themes such as mankind's destruction, greed, and survival against demonic forces. While a bit grim, it also highlights hope in a world with no hope. I can't even tell you which are the best games, as there's so many, from mainline games to multiple sub-series. I find SMT4 to be my favorite Nintendo 3DS game ever. There's a cult following for this franchise, but one spin-off series has, dare I say, hit mainstream success. Do I even have to explain what Persona is at this point? A visual novel style JRPG taking all the aspects of traditional JRPGs and tossing it aside. Persona 5 is one of 2017's best games, praised for its art style, overwhelming amount of content, accessibility, and an adolescent party loved by today's youth. Then we have Persona 4, dare I say the Final Fantasy 7 of this style of JRPG. I say that due to how many copycats spawned post-release. And here's Persona 3. The shakeup SMT fans didn't see coming, adding school elements, relationship building through social links, and a funky soundtrack some love or hate. These are the ones most Persona fans talk about, what we need to talk about is how great and underrated Persona 2 Innocent Sin is. I never experienced a game like this before. If you want to play Persona 2 optimally, a guide is recommended. Progression is mostly like your traditional RPG. Watch a cutscene, talk to people, explore a dungeon, gear up, rinse and repeat, but where things are shaken up is with its rumor mechanic. In this world, rumors have been rumored to be coming true, and well, they are. So when you spread one via mongers throughout Japan, said rumor comes to life, and trust me, it affects how you play. Do you start a rumor about mid-tier weapons being sold simply to afford them? over better gear? Did you hear a rumor about ghosts roaming about in a factory? Let's check it out. Side quests and equipment are made by this mechanic. The story too. While I initially thought this story was a bit dumb, over time, I got sucked in. I think the cast for that. Without spoiling anything, it's a bit of a mystery why our antagonist is plotting to cleanse the world. Finally, we have the battle system, which can take some getting used to. At first, looking a tad complicated, it's just a matter of inputting your party's command before selecting execute. Somewhat like Sukuren or Disgaea. I truly believe Persona 2 Innocent Sin deserves to be broken free from the PSP and PS1's shackles and unleashed onto the Nintendo Switch fanbase. Every time I see my copy of Dragon Quest VIII, it reminds me of two things. One, when I went into Game Express after class and bought Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi. The other, well, that Final Fantasy XII demo disc. Similar to how every Metal Gear fan picked up Zone of the Enders, for MGS2's trial, I purchased DQ8 for PS2's last Final Fantasy entry. Dragon Quest 8 in stores now. Includes playable demo of Final Fantasy 12, rated T for T. Even looking at the 3DS version, those memories come rushing in. Odd way to reminisce on a game, right? I know it sounds a bit harsh because it seems like I'm undermining Dragon Quest 8. But believe me when I say those are good memories. DQ8 is an amazing RPG. In hindsight, I'd say it's probably better than FF12 too. Of course, that is subjective. 
With how popular Dragon Quest has become as of late thanks to Eleven, Builders, and the Die anime, isn't it time we get an HD port of 8? The story is simple. Our hero is on a quest to break a spell that transformed his entire kingdom, such as his king, which is now some sort of toad. During this journey, you'll team up with some of gaming's most charming characters, Yangus, Angelo, and Jessica. Anyone familiar with Wild Arms and Legend of Lagaya will be happy to hear Dragon Quest VIII handles its party system much like those with a small cast. Can't make the tough decision of who to bring into battle? Well, the initial four members is the entire team. Before this game, I truly hated first person battle systems, minus the great Shining the Holy Ark. But Dragon Quest VIII only has a first person perspective at first glance because battle animations are present and beautiful. With a variety of weapons to equip per party member and unique skills to learn with each weapon type, your hero may be set up differently than mine. Regarding music, you'll be hard pressed to find anyone that didn't cry listening to DQ8 soundtrack. The town theme always hits home. My first true experience with Star Ocean was on PlayStation 2. Star Ocean 3 to the end of time. I had a love-hate relationship throughout my initial playthrough. I always wondered why fate was mostly stuck on these boring, underdeveloped planets. Then there's the story. It's not very good. Yet the gameplay was super addicting. Reaching level 255, beating the Maze of Tribulations, and never beating Freya. Ha, no problem. Don't be Sorry. After hundreds of hours. I wanted to go back and try too, yet when I did, I never played past its opening hours. Square brought the original Star Ocean 1 on Nintendo Switch with a port of its wonderful PSP remake. And what a game it is. Just like 3 and 4, it's addicting and so much fun. I have a little personal story for everyone. Earlier this year, my son got very sick, asleep on and off for nearly a week. While I attended him, there was a lot of downtime. So while he slept, I played Star Ocean endlessly. Now whenever I hear the soundtrack, I think of that moment. He's fine by the way. Sadly, after seeing mostly everything First Departure R has to offer, I sit here wondering why Square hasn't released any information of his direct sequel, Star Ocean 2. Dubbed the second story and second evolution, the game was already ported in Japan on PlayStation 4, and the English localization was released as part of a duology on PSP. I heard nothing but great things about Star Ocean 2 from it being the best PS1 JRPG to one of the best games of all time. If we do not get a HD re-release, I guess RetroArch, here I come. We have a full score with this. Hey, 